You're sitting in your room, looking at a clock on the wall. Light leaves the bulb above your head, strikes the clock, and travels to your eye. This is what we call seeing the clock. We can label these three events A, B, and C. What do these events look like from light's point of view? You might be inclined to think that from light's point of view, it stands still while the world moves past it, similar to how the world moves past you when you ride in a car. But no, we saw in the last video that light is timeless and spaceless. To imagine spacelessness, we can try shrinking all the events down to a single location. This isn't quite right, but it gives us an idea. But to imagine timelessness is a little harder. Try this. We have spacelessness. First A happens, then B, but A remains. Then C, but A and B remain. It's as if once something happens, it's always happening. To really picture timelessness and spacelessness is not possible. The closest we can come here would be this image. There is no spatial or temporal separation between A, B, and C. That's timelessness and spacelessness. So let's take it one step further. What if, after the light leaves the bulb, the clock falls off the wall? The light now reflects off of the wall instead of the clock. Let's label these events A, B2, and C. This is clearly a different situation from before. Again, this is how you might imagine it looks from light's point of view. The world moves past it like a car. But if we shrink it all down to spacelessness, here's how it looks. Light leaves the bulb. Light strikes the wall, not the clock. Light hits your eye all without going anywhere. And what if we shrink it to timelessness? A, B2, and C all together. And the clock is lying on the floor this time. Now, here's the main point. According to light, all these events happen timelessly. On the left, we have a timeless picture of the clock not falling. On the right, a timeless picture of the clock falling. So which is true? When light leaves the bulb, does it already know whether the clock will fall? Which event will happen? It must be that both possibilities coexist for the light. In other words, the possibility of the clock staying on the wall and the possibility of the clock falling from the wall must both be available to the light when it first leaves the bulb. We have B1 plus B2, a superposition of possibilities. Now you see these events in their proper order, but for light, there is no time ordering. When you see the clock fall off the wall, that was just one of the possibilities that existed for the timeless light. In this timeless picture, both possibilities are superimposed. Again, our conclusion is that because light is timeless, it must see a superposition of possible futures. This is interesting because that's exactly what quantum mechanics predicts. But we got here through special relativity, not quantum mechanics. It appears that special relativity may lead to quantum mechanics, even though these are generally considered separate theories. Why does this matter to you? All these examples were relative to you, the observer. So the properties of light must be defined relative to the observer. Any unobserved events, like light hitting the clock or the wall, exist only as possibilities for you until you observe them. So everything you have not observed is not yet determined from your point of view. So what are the possibilities available to you?